The first major work that we're considering this semester is Francis Brooks' The History of Emily Montague, which is originally published in 1769. Now, there are several ways to approach this novel. One could, you know, frame it historically, um, and I will be doing a little bit of that in class uh, the next time we meet. But there are some other, I think, just basic, you know, really pertinent issues I want us to just touch on or be aware of as we're moving through this reading. In class, we talked a great deal about the garrison mentality, and you may have wondered in your reading, well, how does that apply here? Ed Rivers never really ends up, you know, in a garrison necessarily uh, during the, you know, the brief period of time that we encounter him, and, I, and that's certainly true. But one of the things I want you to pay attention to is the way in which this kind of... Um, you know, prototypical, um, um, supposedly average, although also exceptionally, you know, um, handsome and adventurous individual, uh, engages Canada. How this Englishman comes to Canada and what he sees and, and what he says as he goes through, uh, as he goes through various parts, as he travels from Quebec to Montreal, as he meets different um, peasants, I think is the word that he uses. Um, how does he refer to people? How does he describe people? And, and what might that tell us about him and the society that he comes from? Because very soon, as we're going to be getting into the reading for next week, this, this society, this English uh, this English society that he's a representative of is going to come under attack uh, in some pretty substantial ways. But let's just back up for a second and think a little bit about who Ed River is. Uh, in the first uh, few letters that we get from him, we learn several things, one of which is that he's tremendously interested in, in meeting women uh, in Canada, um, and he and his friend uh, Temple kind of go through this you know, running commentary about the different kinds of women uh, that he's interested in. Um, he um, uh, Temple claims to be interested in younger women, and Rivers claims to be interested in older women, and this is all kind of you know run-of-the-mill standard uh, guy talk we might think about or think of it that way. But what's really interesting here is the way in which we see him setting up kind of these preconceptions even before he you know uh, gets off the boat as it is. Um, and we might wonder about how these conceptions, these preconceptions, are going to impact his his travels through. Um, Canada. One of the very early things we see in this novel, in, in addition to his comments about uh, the First Nations peoples that he encounters, are the French people that he encounters, or the descendants of the French in Canada, uh, who were originally uh, the population that was referred to as Canadian. What we see in his comments um, is a general dismissal of them um, in any way other than noting perhaps the beauty of some French women that he encounters. Um, he refers to the people uh, in Montreal as lazy and stupid, uh, but what's essentially worthwhile about them is that they're polite. And it's that concept of being polite that comes up again and again that's really important. When he talks about being polite and he talks about being mannered, what he's essentially talking about is people who are following the established customs of society. It's the primary reason he gives for being interested in Emily Montague, you may have noticed. Uh, her beauty is one thing, you know, her, her, her heritage or background is another thing, but it's her politeness, her, her towing the lines of social standards that he finds to be most exciting. And that's a particular mindset that we're going to see run through a number of characters this semester, and we'll probably be associating that with the, with the fighter class, uh, to use uh, Northrop Frye's garrison mentality. Uh, scheme. Fighters are attracted to politeness. Fright fighters are attracted to people who know their place in society and know how to navigate society uh, so that they uphold society's conventions. And that's something that I really want you to be queuing in on uh, very early on in the semester. One of the other things you may have noticed um, is that very quickly after he praises the beauty of Canada, we have this wonderful moment where he talks about how suddenly bored he is um, and how he's, how he's basically falling into a vegetative state uh, is the term that he uses. So all of this bluster about how beautiful Canada is and how much of a utopia it is and how you know, it's just physically overwhelming in its, in its, in its beauty doesn't doesn't really seem to sustain Rivers very long. Uh, he his attention very quickly turns to the people, and as soon as it turns to the people, he begins to classify them um, against how well they live up to English standards. One final note I want you to be attending to here is his general disdain for Catholicism, what he refers to as the Romish Church. Uh, we see it in his disdain for the convents that his sister's ask, asking about. We see it in his disdain for uh, how the missionaries are um, interacting with First Nations people. Um, what we have here, and what is a little more obvious perhaps if you were in the British Authors class, is a continuation of kind of the Protestant-Catholic divide, uh, which in Canada plays out between the English who are associated with, with Protestantism 
and the French who are associated with Catholicism. So we have this deep-seated religious disagreement already showing up in this new landscape. So that's what I want you to be paying attention to as you're um, focusing on these first 35 pages or so, um, or, or the reading that was assigned. There's many more things to focus on as well, but those are some issues that I think relate directly to our conversation from last time.